class. My name is Pam Turner. I'll be the moderator for this morning's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. 
In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Okay, I'm going to announce, I'm going to go ahead and announce our visitors first before I announce the, um, the lineup here. Um, we do have visit visitors from a couple different branches. Visiting with um, Karen Martin, we have um, Crystal Campbell from the Kingston, Jamaica branch. We have, um, I'm sorry? Oh, okay, sorry about that. We have doctors, um, we have Mar Mariah, Askamia, hopefully I'm saying your name right, and Uriah Sufana visiting from Detroit Branch School. And then we also have visiting from the south, north side Chicago, we have Bernie Villanueva. Is that every, did I get everybody? <laughs> All right, and um, we will have a prayer, class dedicated in prayer by Crystal Campbell. Um, our scripture this morning is John the 5th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And then are we do have any musical selection, Lisa? Are we having music? Okay, with Lisa Zaisi and Jennifer Marshall will be doing music this morning. Can you give our prayer? <laughs> do you not want to give the prayer? You don't have to if you don't want to. You want, would you to give the prayer for us, Charlie? Sure. <laughs> Good morning, class. Good morning. We all just bow in our heart and our minds, and we just thank Yahweh for everything, for just gathering us here together because it's not just on our own accord that we are here together as 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 one as one it is his it is him that is doing it all and we thank him for for that for this morning and for all that he has blessed us with and i just want to say thank you and hallelujah all praises unto Yahweh through his precious son, Yahshua the Messiah.
authorities in various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. John the fifth chapter. After this there was a feast of the Jews and Yahshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called Bethesda 
having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of in, impotent folk, of blind, halt withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Yahshua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Yahshua saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked to his house, and the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed knew not who it was. For Yahshua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yahshua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, Thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahshua which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahshua and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because they contended that he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Elohim was his father, making himself equal to, with Elohim. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and giveth them life, even so the Son giveth life to those that believe in him. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but it passed, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and live, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I am taught of my Father, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, ye will say, Thy witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, 
The same works I do, and they bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye know not his word, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yahweh or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast the demon, who goest about to kill thee? Yahshua answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcised a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteousness judgment. That was John the fifth chapter. All right. um, we will have a three speaker format for today's class. We do have a couple empty seats up here if somebody wants to come. What Oh, oh, we're waiting for two guys. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Okay. For our first speaker, we'll have a, our visiting brethren, Dr. Bernie Villanueva. Okay, there's the best spot for that. You can put it wherever it's comfortable. Let's put it here. <laughs> I don't know, is, it, is it working? Hey, how you doing, Joel? Um, <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning. Yeah. Uh, praise Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, both North and South Side give their love unto you. Um, I'm always uh, happy to testify to some. Of, is this a three speaker format? Okay. Um, just happy to testify to some of the things I've learned while coming into the school. Uh, I know we're expecting a couple of first-time visitors, right? So, uh, yes. <laughs> so, um, let me have uh, Hosea 11 and, not, not Hosea 11, um, talks about, I shall, I think it's uh, Hosea, is it 11 and 1? I shall stand upon my watch. Yes. Habakkuk. Habakkuk, that's right. Habakkuk too. Because see, this is a divine uh, divine vision, divine revelation that was given to the founder, uh, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio, 1931. He said, you know, this is nothing that he, he sat down and burned the midnight oil trying to figure it out on his own. This is something that, you know, came by divine vision, divine revelation. 
And when you go to church, I've never heard no preacher ever tell me, you know, make me uh, prove it to you. And when I first came into this class uh, and I heard that there was a divine vision, divine revelation given, I basically almost walked out the door. But when I heard somebody say, make me prove it to you, that's what made me sit, you know, really made me sat there. And... Um, even though I had somebody telling me the night before and things did make sense to me, you know, but you're just coming in new, you know, so when nobody, he didn't mention that part of it. So, you know, so let's get that, please. Rebecca, two and one. Mm -hmm. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me and what shall I answer when I, when I am reproved. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said to me, I'm sorry, and Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make mm -hmm. it plain upon tables that everyone may read it fluently. Right, so, excuse me a second. So he's saying, you know, he's saying he's at a tower, which is an elevated place. You see, Yahshua the Messiah, or the, or the Father, is going to speak to us in our heart and our mind. And he's in an elevated uh, place. So he's going to speak to us and elevate our heart and mind. Go ahead. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. but at the end it will speak and not lie. That's right. So at the end, and folks, I don't know about you guys, but probably <laughs> there's a lot of uh, turmoil going on in each one, each and every one of our own lives. Uh, not only, so that means the whole world's in turmoil. Mm -hmm. However, it's this teaching that what? is what keeps you together. Right. See, it's the teaching of Yahshua the Messiah that's in you is what keeps you together. Something for you to hold on to in this crazy world. Go ahead. Uh, don't it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Okay, so is there more to that? No. No? Okay. So, I thought I'm... Let's see. Keep reading a little bit more there, please. Okay. Behold his soul, which is... No, nope, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we see that this divine vision, divine revelation, you know, was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, the state of Ohio. So one of the things that, um, let's see, that Christianity has said is that... Uh, here we go. The Old Testament is fulfilled, right? They're looking at this people... The, the world has misunderstood the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, saying that he came in to institute, right, rather than fulfill. So institute means to set up. Just as I'm going to, uh, just as you go and uh, get a car, right, they're going to institute, they're instituting the payments, right? When you walk out that door with that car, you're going to have, let's say, whatever, 30 payments, right? Or whatever, 50 payments, right? And you're going to have to finish paying that car. Mm -hmm. And when you finish paying that last, uh, that last payment, mm -hmm. you don't want to hear that it's instituted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to hear it's fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole thing. They took this, uh, this old, what, what's happened is this old, that's what they're doing out in the church world. They're doing the things that were instituted under the law, given to the Jews, and... Okay, so it's... Hold on. There we go. Oh, nope, it's not on still. It's not, yeah. So, Sorry. it looks like I got to... I got to move over to something else now. So, <laughs> so we know that now. Where was that? So let's let's go back. Let's uh, have uh, take a couple scriptures from the Messiah himself. Matthew five seventeen eighteen, yeah. Luke twenty four forty four forty five, um, and let's just pick up a couple, just a couple fulfillment scriptures to show forth that that's what this school is about. Going about not just saying something, but going and showing where it says it, right? Mm -hmm. And we might have heard it time and time again, but as Dr. Kinley said, tired of repetition? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you know, are you tired of your heartbeat? Uh, <laughs> well, 
I might as well. No, just <laughs> keep going. Right. Keep going. Yes. A soldier presses on. <laughs> Matthew 5 and 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Great. Right. He, is, he is not come to destroy the law or the prophets. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's right. So he's coming to fulfill. And the word fulfill means to bring to an end. And you can look it up on your own, you know, because we can't, you know, this is a school and it is not a church. And it means that what? Fulfill means to what? To translate also into reality. You know, you don't want to just be doing something and not have it translate into reality, right? You don't want to be forever going to school and never become like for a doctor or something and never become that doctor. You see, you don't want to just take it from a book knowledge standpoint, but you want to take it to a practical application standpoint too, right? Just that's what we're doing in this school. We're learning about Yahshua the Messiah and we want to make it into a practical application into our own lives. Go ahead. Oh, Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake with you while I was with, yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Right. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. John 1 and 44 and 45, I believe. Let's have that. So we see that he's talking about beginning at Moses. You see, we got, you know, let's look back at Moses. Because what he's talking about is he's fulfilling what? The law and the prophets. The law being what? From Genesis to Deuteronomy, those five books. And then the other 34 books being Joshua through Malachi. So go ahead. John 1 and 44. Now Philip was at Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him, mm -hmm. of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So we found him of who the law... Uh, of, go ahead, say that. We found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Right. So they, see, they found him. So that was Yahshua the Messiah. And we look at this, you know, a lot of people think, well, you're... Old Testament, what's the Old Testament got to do with me? You know what I'm saying? And so they, what they don't understand is that Yahshua the Messiah is fulfilling these things that were under that covenant. And see, and, and what, the, what, uh, what the churches are doing are practicing the things that were under that law that was given to Jews and Jews only. What he's done, I don't have an agent dispensation chart here, do I? Yeah. No. I need one. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, but in the agent dispensation chart, it would show that, you know, and I could kind of look at, th at this one, because this kind of does show it. You know, in other words, what took place before the cross is what was instituted by Yahweh to the children of Israel. But you see, at that time, what we're going to do is go back because we're looking at going back to Moses. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back unto Moses, and we'll use this Moses chart here, and then um, we're going to see how uh, they didn't know anything. They were in a state and condition where they were completely ignorant of how to worship the Creator. And many of us, and see, we don't know, we're... There's just so much to go over, but we, we, I thought I knew something when I came into class. I thought I ha had some kind of idea of the way things were. I had no idea that I was walking in darkness. Let's have Romans 8 and 6. <clears throat> you know, I had no idea that I was a dead man walking, you see, and that I had, <clears throat> I had to be resurrected, you know. I, I had no idea. So... Because I walked in darkness. Go ahead. Romans, Romans 1 and 6. 8 and 6. Eight, six. Romans 8 I'm and sorry, six. Eight, 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, yes. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to be carnally minded is death. I had no idea. The only death I knew about was graveyard dead. I didn't think about being minded, being a certain way, a frame of mind being dead. So, to be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is what? 
Life, life and peace. Life and peace. So this chart here is dark down at the bottom because what it's typifying is a state of being ignorant of your creator. You see? And this is and we're not talking about the body now. What are we talking about? The mind. We're talking about, you know, how you know how you how we our frame of mind is, see? And so we see these children of Israel down here. There was a promise given to Abraham that what? Uh, let's pick up that promise. I think it's what? Uh, the 15th chapter of Genesis, I think. Or the 17th chapter. I can't remember. It's like 15 and 1, I think. Or seven. It talks about his seed shall uh, go into a land they know not of, be evenly entreated and come out with great substance and inherit a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And that promise that, through that promise that all the families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. See? So Abraham begots Isaac. Isaac begots Jacob, whose name is changed to Israel, who has a what? Twelve sons of, mm -hmm. twelve, twelve sons, which we call the twelve tribes of Israel, right? So. Genesis 15 and I'll pick it up at three. And Abram, and then jump around. Okay. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yahweh, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, I am Yahweh that brought thee out of the error of the child Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Yahweh Elohim, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he, um, and I'll jump down okay. to 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Right. And so, and then there's another word that talks about them, uh, you know, being... Um, uh, the, all the families of the earth being blessed, but for the, the sake of uh, time, expediting time. <laughs> let's, so we see that the 12 children of Israel, as it was said, they go into a land they know not of. And so they end up in the, in the land of Egypt, multiply, and see, so then you see Moses is born under a death decree where they're killing two children, two and under. And see, it's just the same thing. Yahshua the Messiah, he comes in and he is born under a death decree. So why? Because why is that happening? Because it happened back here. The scriptures testify him, you see. And so now he's, Moses is being born under a death decree to sh because he's a type of Yahshua the Messiah. So we see that um, he's putting a little... Um, a little ark, right, that's put into the, um, his mother puts him in, in a little ark, so there's a death decree, he's put into an ark, and it's with pitch and slime, that's burial, and then he uh, is floated down the river Nile where uh, Pharaoh's daughter picks it up, which is a type of resurrection, see, it's just a type of resurrection, so, or Pharaoh's handmaid, so, uh, Pharaoh's daughter's handmaid. So we see a death, burial, resurrection. Why is that significant? Let's have 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4. So this is all what? Symbolic of Yahshua the Messiah. That is what? Taking place to what? Point to Yahshua the Messiah. Yahshua the Messiah is the, re the reality of it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, mm -hmm. which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So he's preaching into it, and this is where you can stand, in this gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Go ahead. By which also ye are saved. And you're saved in this gospel. Go ahead. If you keep in memory. If you keep in memory. Go what ahead. I have preached unto you, mm -hmm. unless you have believed in vain. 
Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. And you know, I just got to interrupt for this, sorry, but we're all learning in this school, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like anything, as I was saying, you know, if you believed in vain, in other words, if it didn't mean anything to you, because you can read and read and read and study, and it's not bad to study, you should study, but when you don't apply it to your life, again, it's like, you know, me, I could have been, a, I, I was a mechanic, but if I never got out there, all I did was go to school, and I never touched a car, you wouldn't really probably want me working on your car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, so you want somebody who's got actual experience, you know what I'm saying? And that actually fulfills everything, you see, and makes you that. Go ahead. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. See, so Paul is giving you, first of all, what he received. He didn't change the story up. Mm -hmm. You see, it's the same story he received as what he's delivering unto you. Go ahead. How that the Messiah died for our sins, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. He died for our sins according to the scriptures you see go ahead and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so there was a death you see uh, there is any he, and he's the ultimate sacrifice for us he's a death there's a death he's buried in joseph's new tomb and resurrects the third day according to the scriptures you see so we look at the children of israel and we see how the, they are in egypt in a death-like state you see what what's the um they have no knowledge of the creator he wants there's uh as moses is reared up in pharaoh's daughter's household 40 years old he's what he sees a hebrew and egyptian fighting he intercedes and he kills the Egyptian. He buries him in the sand. And then when they, it's found out that uh, it's known, he flees to what? The wilderness. So you have a death, burial, resurrection. He's in the wilderness. He gets the name at the burning bush. He's, he's what? Told. This is my name. He did not have the name, you see. And why was the name significant? Because all these gods, if you ever go to any, do any studying on Egypt, you'll find out there's just a lot of names for gods. And what did Christians say? Like a guy, I think, last night we ran into at the beach. He says, oh, yeah, God has a lot of names. I said, can you show me that in the Bible? <laughs> you know, that's all. I just show me that in the Bible, you know. Okay. And that's a simple one, right? And you could do that with a lot of things. You know, just tell them. Show me that in the Bible, right. <laughs> you know, because what, what people don't realize is they have a lot of concepts, theories, and opinions right. that aren't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it really is, and, you know, and that's one thing that we can do. We can say, well, because this is a school, and we say, where is that in the Bible? So, you know, so we see that uh, he's told the name because all these gods had names. Pharaoh himself was the god of gods in Egypt. And if you'd said, you know, hey, what god do you worship? Just like today, where they say the god of gods. You know? I say, well, if you're back in Egypt, that'd be Pharaoh. And Pharaoh wore, wore a crown with a serpent. You know what I'm saying? That's the god you serve, right? And it's, but little do people know, that's the god that you served before you came in here. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a satanic, it's a satanic idea. Mm -hmm. You see? So, <clears throat> we see here that he goes down, he's commissioned, he's given what? He's told, go down into the land of Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my children go so that they may serve me. Uh, let them go a three-day journey so that they may serve me, you see? And so he, by the proclamation of the name Yahweh, it has got the power to overcome those what? That which opposes you. That which wants to oppress you. That which wants to keep you down. Keep you, me, and everyone else down. That's what we're up against. You see, and we are no match for the devil. Just as those children of Israel were no match for the devil. And, and when Moses comes down, he doesn't say, okay, everybody, grab your spears. Let's sharpen them up. We're going to go ahead and start fighting. You know? <laughs> you know? That's not... And you, oh, Although Yah, Yah, we called them an army, how many of them fought? <laughs> they followed Yahweh out of there. They followed Yahshua out of there. You see? So, you know, that's what the army is, that you're part of the body, of a body that has so much power that there's nothing that can stop it. You see? And so, here it is that uh, he, he goes down to Pharaoh, and he says, look, 
Yahweh has said what? Let, let the children of Israel go so they may his children go so that they may serve him a three day journey. And what's he say? I know, I know not Yahweh and neither will I let them go. And when I first came into this class, you know how many people I thought would just be willing to accept the name? Just the name Yahweh they can barely accept. For Yahshua, mm -mm. Right. you know, because now you're talking the Savior. Right. You see? And the God of this world has just blinded the minds mm -hmm. of the people you see and so but it still doesn't mean that we don't you know we have to get out you know if we've been given something you know then what we we try to help others you know once you know something what you try to help others that's why we have a doctor in front of our name uh, you know what good would a doctor be if you go to the hospital and he doesn't help you <laughs> you know you're sick and he's like <laughs> you know I'd be like you know get out of here you know <laughs> I came to see a doctor I need some help I'm ailing from something and that's what all these folks out here in this world they're all sick <laughs> We and some of us are sick in here too, you know, and we need that help too. So let's not forget about us, right? And so we see that Pharaoh, there's ten devastating plagues that are poured out, and then on that what, that uh, last one, which is what, Stygian Black? Oh uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, the the death of the firstborn. You see, and what is your firstborn? You see, so you know if if we all if we say you what we all come from spirit. Well, you started out somewhere, right? So you came into a physical body, but that soul was put into that, that body. So your firstborn is your soul, right. you see? And you don't want to suffer the death of your firstborn here. You want to come out of Egypt, you know? And that's why it says in Revelations, I think it's 18 and 4 maybe, it says what? Come out of Babylon. Come out of her, my people, you see? That ye be not what? Partakers of her sins, you see? And that's what Yahshua the Messiah is doing. He's saving us from our sins. You see, that's that's we can't save ourselves. You know, there's nothing you can ask and you can want, but you can't save yourself. You're gonna need to go to Yahshua the Messiah, who is the only one that can save us. And just like what we see here that this children of Israel, they had to take out a lamb. They had to examine that lamb. And that's one of the things this one guy said last night too was that, oh, I've heard a lot of uh, we were playing class and he walked by. Oh, I hear you. Are you Christians? No. <laughs> you know, you know, people assume you're a Christian because you're hearing something about the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So, when you start talking to them, <clears throat> the whole thing about it is, you know, we're not Christians, but see, he thought he knew already what we're into a preconceived notion and see we just it was it be who it you can't sit there and say that's one thing we have to have a humble attitude about it you know and examine the lamb you know that's the thing you he says oh i've read a lot of things i know this is the truth and blah blah you know i said okay he's saying a lot of stuff before he even heard anything yeah. you know he's not really listening at all you know yeah. that's what i ascertained from from picking up from him right away and it's like you know that's the whole thing if we got if we're given the lamb right yasha messiah what's it say in john 1 29 pick that up and we're going to see how they had to take out a lamb you have to examine the lamb at this late date and time right now you're going to have to examine we all have to examine the lamb you know there's things that we cannot let certain things slip out we got to be careful about slipping up and things saying the wrong thing you know and manifesting the wrong thing you know and it's not saying that you won't you know we all are still in this fleshly body which means one thing you're gonna need that Savior all the way on out of here and it doesn't excuse you from negative behavior now it doesn't excuse me from my negative behavior that I might have you see I have to go to Yahshua I have to ask him please remove whatever it is that I need to be that needs to be removed go ahead John 1 and 29. Mm -hmm. The next day John seeth Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which come, which taketh away the sin of the world. There you go. So he's declared what? The sacrifice already to take away the sin of the world. Isn't that coinciding just with that gospel, right? He's saving us from our sin. And this Israel here is has to take out a lamb. They have to... <clears throat> 
they have to examine the lamb, right? So that lamb, um, oh, yeah. So we're talking about we're talking about these children of Israel, okay? And they're down here in this land of Egypt, and you know, I'll just have to bring it around just for a second because I'm gonna just bring out a point. I know my time's probably just about up. <laughs> yes, it is, Joe. Yeah. So one of the things I want to show is when we're looking down here, these charts are a result of a divine vision, divine revelation that was given to the founder. He said, make me prove it to your satisfaction. He doesn't want us just to believe in something because, you know, like Christianity said, you know, Christianity told us, you know, a matter of fact, I'll tell you right now, when you ask so many questions in Christianity, you know, it becomes, it becomes your lack of faith. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You must not be a believer. Yeah. No, no. The thing about it is you got you're gonna have to really uh you're entitled that is your divine right to ask questions you see before and you it's just like look this this life we live is like a womb you know the, the baby's in the womb right and it has a certain amount of time to be formed if that baby doesn't get an arm it's not going to get that arm when it comes out we take off this flesh and we're not we don't know our creator we don't know our savior our Savior. We need to know our Savior now, mm -hmm. not later. <laughs> it's too late then. You're on the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to know your Savior now. And see, I used to think we'd, I'd find out later, you know, when I, we'd sit in a circle and then. <laughs> but see, so <clears throat> this children of Israel, we go back to Moses. The Messiah says, look, he's fulfilling the law. See, Christians think that he's setting something up, that he was setting up an example for us to follow. No, he's not. He's fulfilling the law given to the Jews and Jews only. That, you know, circumcisions, baptisms, Passover meals, you know, things that we did in the church, uh, the Holy Eucharist and all that, you know, that's all from that law that was given to Jews and Jews only. They shouldn't even be doing it. So when we go down here, he says, look, I'm fulfilling the law and prophets. Well, what is the law and prophets? We're going back to Moses. We look at Moses here and see Moses is, uh, there's 10 devastating plagues poured out in Egypt. And we see, how can we look at the Messiah? Why? They had to take out a lamb on the 10th plague. I got five minutes to wrap it up. So the Messiah, he's called the lamb. So, and we talked about, I'm trying, I'm just going to give you a little overcap. Talked about the, the gospel being the death, the burial, the resurrection, three days according to the scriptures. So that's what it is said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. So Yahshua went through a death, a burial, a resurrection, three days according to the scriptures. And then later what? I'll pour the Holy Spirit. Now, this Old Testament shows that there was a lamb down here in Egypt. They were in bondage. They had to take out a lamb. They had to examine that lamb. That lamb was pointing up to Yahshua the Messiah. That's what was happening. That's why we go back, because the scriptures testify to him. So we see that when they had to eat, they had to eat that lamb. They couldn't eat. They could not leave lamb behind, just like we have to eat the whole story. That's why we need to examine it. That's why we need to go back, and we need to actually look at it and make sure that we're getting the whole story, nothing but the whole story. And so they had to, uh, they couldn't leave. If they left anything, it had to be burnt with fire, totally consumed. And then they had to come out and they said, okay, so Pharaoh finally didn't want to let them out and says, go ahead to leave and tell Yahweh to bless me too. They get to this Red Sea, right? And what happens? Uh, Exodus uh, 14... 17, I think. You see, they get to this Red Sea, and then the Pharaoh says, I changed my mind. I'm not letting you go. Yeah. So he goes to get him, and then what happens? And see, that's us coming up against problems in this world, and this is what you have to do. Exodus 14, and what do you want? 17? Fear not. Yes. Um, is that yeah. what you want? Okay, yes. 12. Um, okay. Exodus 14 and 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For had it been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, fear ye not. 
right. stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. So he said, he said, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. And what happened? First Corinthians 10 and 1, please. And then uh, Exodus uh, 23 and 20. Um, Oh, name chart right here. So we see here that Yahshua, you see, we say the name isn't Jesus. Why? There's no J in Hebrew, Latin, or Greek to this very day, right? So there's no way, if it's not a J or J sound in these languages, there's no, if it doesn't exist this day, folks, you can't go back, go back 2,000 years ago. For sure it wasn't existing then. So, you know, they may have heard of it, but not at that time. Yahshua is the name. Yahweh comes from what is uh, Yahweh, and Shua means what? Salvation. salvation. So this name actually means yeah. Yahweh salvation. We just heard, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. They declared Yahshua right here at this Red Sea. When they were coming up against a, something, their oppressor, who was going to what? Kill them and hurt them. They called on Yahshua. And Yahshua what? Open that Red Sea. Go ahead. 1 um, Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye shall, shall be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Yes. yes. And all did eat that same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drink of that spiritual rock that led them and that rock was the Messiah. That rock was the Messiah back there with these guys? Mm -hmm. Didn't they call on Yahshua? They said, stand still, see the salvation of Yahweh. That, that's, that's Yahshua. Mm -hmm. That's Yahshua, folks, the one they call Jesus. Mm -hmm. Call on Yahshua. So they have to see. Now Yahshua, he's declared by John to be the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Behold the Lamb of the, uh, that taketh away the sin of the world. These, what was the sin of the children of Israel that they were being delivered from? Mm -hmm. The sin was that they were inundated in all these other gods and deities mm -hmm. that were in Egypt. That was the sin. Mm -hmm. And they had to be shown what? Who is the one they should worship? Mm -hmm. They go through the divided waters of the Red Sea. What else did I have? Mm -hmm. They had Exodus. And so they get out here. Mm -hmm. They learn how to worship Yahweh. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he speaks to them from the mount. He gives them the laws and oracles. There's three trips up to this mount. The first one, they're given the law. They say, all Yahweh says we will do. It was a marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the first congregation. Second trip, is that five minutes or that's it? That's it? That's it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't fear to hear the other bell. Okay. So, in this school... We have to give the baton to the next person, right? Because it's not a one-man show and we just pass it on, you see? The one we worship is Yahshua the Messiah. So we pass it on. All praise and honor and glory goes to Yahshua the Messiah. Yeah. Our next speaker will be one of our... Um, Visiting brethren from the Detroit branch, Dr. Uriah Sifana. <coughs> just put that wherever it's comfortable. Okay. Well, I won't be up here long. Uh, <laughs> I'm not dressed properly, uh, so that's probably the reason why I won't be up here long, but um, it's a pleasure and honor to be up here. Uh, just for the first time visitors, uh, I just want to let you all know that this is the truth and you are in the correct, I'm going to just take this off, you are in the right spot, okay? Uh, just to reiterate and highlight some points from Dr. Bernie here. Uh, Yahweh is the Father, that is the correct name for our Heavenly Father. Elohim is the Word or Son, and Yahshua is the Holy Spirit uh, operating in a physical body. Now I want to pick up, uh, let's pick up uh, John, the fifth chapter. Uh, let's start at, uh, let's try 16. 
John 5 and 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahshua and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, mm -hmm. but said also that Yahweh was his father, making himself equal with Yahweh. Okay, I just want to stop there. So basically, uh, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, mm -hmm. these three are one. Mm -hmm. That is the main principle of this teaching, one of the main principles of this teaching. They're not three distinctive people. I would put it that way so you understand. These three are one. Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. Yah Yahweh being the Father, as I reiterated. Elohim, the Word or Son, which is not the Bible. Yahshua, the Holy Spirit manifested in, in or out of a body. Okay? So, just like I'll take this for example just so to, to hit it home for you all. You have uh, water, H2O. It can come in three different states, correct? Mm -hmm. Solid, liquid, and gas. Mm -hmm. Yahweh would be like the gaseous state. Mm -hmm. Elohim would be like the, uh, the liquid. And Yahshua is being that physical solid. Okay? But guess what? It's all what? Water. Water at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Okay. For, Yah for Yahweh has showed it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him. Take the invisible things. The things we cannot see. Go ahead. From the creation of the world. From the creation of the world. Are clearly seen. Are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Okay. Being understood by the things that are made. So we must take the natural to help us understand the spiritual. So we take our own physical bodies, which is likened unto this. And then I say these three are one. Yeah. Okay. We have your own physical body testifies to the creator. Okay. You have the hair cavity. Mm-hmm chest cavity and abdominal region. These three make up your one physical body. Okay, don't you see that? Uh, let me get uh, just to hit, also hit home uh, Exodus 3 and 15. I know Dr. Bernie here uh, just talked about the name here, so I just want to hit that home. Actually, before we get there, let me get John 5 and 43 to show you the resemblance here. John 5 and 43. Mm -hmm. I am come in my father's now name. Now he says, I, I, I come in my father's name. Now who's speaking here? Yahshua. Yahshua. And ye receive me not. And ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name. Okay. Okay. Don't you see? So well, let's say Jesus is talking here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Keep going for me, please. Let another come in his own Let name. another come in his own name. Him you will receive. Okay. Doesn't the whole world re receive Lord, God, Jesus Christ, Allah, Buddha? We can keep going on and on. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I come in my Father's name. Mm -hmm. Don't you see the resemblance? Yah being a masculine portion of his name. Mm -hmm. Way being a feminine portion. So he takes the masculine portion here. And just like Dr. Bernie said, Shua means salvation. Mm -hmm. So this is pointing up to your true creator. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Exodus 3 and 15 for me, please. And then I'm going to have my seat again. I'm not properly dressed, so I'm going to pass that baton. <laughs> Exodus 3 and 15. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Got to pick it up. Oh, yeah. Pick it up at 13. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say, say unto them, The Elohim of your father hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Okay, why would Moses ask that question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A name is very important. That's what the world doesn't think about. As we just had a conversation with the gentleman last night, he says, yeah, he has many names. <laughs> Do you have many names? <laughs> I, get, I, get, I look at it this way. That check that you receive from your, for whatever job you work, mm -hmm. put many names on there and you see if you get paid. <laughs> All right. Keep going for me, please. What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Aya Ashaiah, 
And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be had sent me unto you. Okay, so just stop there for me. Aya Asha Aya. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Aya Asha Aya. Mm -hmm. I will be what I will to be. Okay, that's why you have down here at the burning bush. He said, Throw that rod down and it turn into a serpent. Right. It's not I am that I am. Mm -mm. All, all that you are, you can't be no one else. Mm -hmm. Yahweh's the creator. Mm -hmm. He can do what he wants to do. Right. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Keep going for me, please. And Elohim said, moreover unto Moses, mm -hmm. thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Yahweh. Elohim of Abraham, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob had sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Okay, did he say this is my name temporarily? No. Yeah. Forever. forever. He said this is my name forever. forever. A memorial. Can we get that? What's the definition of memorial? Because this is a school. We research everything. I don't take anyone's word for anything. And that goes for, for anything in this world. Okay? Not just this teaching. You know, this teaching is supposed to help you for the natural world too. Okay? Anyone has it? Memorial. Uh -huh. Memorial. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Anyway. Something, especially a structure established to remind people or of a person or event. Okay. A monument. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good enough right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a memorial unto all generations, not just the Jews, not just the Arabs. Mm -hmm. Blacks, we can keep going and on. This is, a, we're a brotherhood. It doesn't matter. What, what Can I get the aim? Race? Yes. It doesn't matter. We welcome everyone here. To okay? form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race, nationality, nationality creed, sex, caste, or color. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say all praises to Yahshua, Yahweh through his son, Yahshua Messiah. May we all say hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, so far. Our next speaker will be the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joel Turner. <laughs> this has been a class. <laughs> um, I apologize for the small accom accommodations. Um, however, um, Yashua is the one who provided them for us. So um, even though we're all nice and cozy here, um, I, I'm just happy we got a room. Yeah. You know? And um, uh, we haven't had to use the stands for years. <laughs> and they still kind of work, okay? They could work a little bit better, um, but, sorry. This is my, um, my concordance today because I left my Bible and everything at home. But Yahweh's purpose is still gonna work no matter if you're dressed right or wrong, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's how you're dressed spiritually that matters. And uh, the people in this class are the best dressed people on the planet. <laughs> now, um, I've had uh, some experience with a, a friend of mine who um, years ago came to class. And um, now he's getting older. He's significantly older than I am. And he's getting religious. You know, because as you get older, you know, I turned 60 this year, okay? I, I feel as good as I did when I was in my 30s or 40s. You see, I feel really good, uh, and I'm lucky. Pardon me? I don't look better, no, but I didn't look good to start with, so, you know. Yeah, just wait. Okay, oh, all right, yeah. And, but, you see, so this person is, um, who never was religious is now getting a religion. Okay, and he remembered that he, he came to one of these classes and that we had some, apparently he understood that we, are, we, we have something different. 
So uh, I got a call this week and he was supposed to present to his Bible class. And um, he was honest with me. He said he didn't want to look like a fool. And so he called me to get information. <laughs> See, they know. I mean, you can't come to this class and hear the things that were pe preached by, by Bernie and, and Uzziah, you see, and, and whoever else gets a, up on this floor. You can't walk away from here thinking they don't know nothing. Mm. All right? Because the world ain't teaching this. Mm -hmm. But the world can't deny this. Mm -hmm. If you do the investigation, you're going to find these names are the truth. Mm -hmm. And your minister knows them, unless he's an idiot. Okay, your priest knows them, your, your mullah knows them, they know these names, they just didn't tell you about it. So this person calls me and he's like, he, I, I have to give him credit, he had some honesty to tell me why he was calling me, I was, he wanted my help so he didn't have to look like an idiot at his class. So he asks me, the, or the, 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 the topic is grace. All right, and um, so he started to tell me what they thought grace was, and they think grace is Lisa being nice to me, even if I don't deserve it. Okay, and I told him that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures don't say anything about. You know, I mean, you go back in the Law of the Prophets and you'll see that, you know, like for example, uh, if, if there was a king and he liked somebody, it said that he would have grace on them. But that's showing forth the principle. That's not about that king. That's not about the person who's being treated nicely. That's about Yahweh and his purpose. Okay, because Yahweh, see, really Yahshua, he is that king. And if you look up grace in your, in your scriptures, it says that we're saved by grace through faith and that it's the gift of Yahweh. And I said grace, I told this person, that grace has nothing to do with you being nice to someone who, you see, see in his case, okay, he's got some money and um, he's also like giving the money away, okay, trying to earn Christ credits, if I can put it that way, you know, and it, it, and I said, grace has nothing to do with that. Grace only comes by Yahweh, that it's a gift. And you see, you being, you being here right now, everyone in this room, everybody that has a chair in this room, you are getting grace. You are getting, see, grace is unmerited reward. The reward is the truth. The reward is the saving of your soul through that truth. You know? Now, how do you explain that in a half hour conversation? You know, I think if I get another call, I'm going to say, look, those people don't know what they're talking about. Come to a class and learn the truth. Don't try to get one up on somebody in your Bible class because you don't know what's in your scriptures. See, now let me start with something that people don't know that's in their scriptures. And that is, what is the purpose of the Messiah? What did he, he come to do? And, and Bernie was talking about this, and Uzziah was talking about this. You see, see they, they, they think that Jesus came, and this is the word that they use. Okay, I'm just going to... I always hate erasing the names. I don't know what... You know, this morning I was sitting out on the patio drinking a cof some coffee and, and uh, was reading John the 5th chapter and that's why I got it as a scripture because I'm just like amazed at how beautiful it is. And also amazed that Yahshua caused me to understand everything that's in that chapter. Every scripture in there makes sense. Mm -hmm. That it fits a framework that... I have received by others getting up on this floor and teaching the truth. This teaching, you see, is not like anything out here where people, they're all about feelings, they're all about, uh, you know, uh, doing the hand-waving thing, okay, you know, and, and you, like Brian and I were talking about how we were both Baptists and we all sat, we, we sat in the back of the room so in case we take 
wanted to take a snooze. Okay, you see, because that's you know. But we were we were doing our duty. You see, but this teaching is it's a framework, and that you have to start out first with like Uzziah was saying with the right names. That's where you start out. Mm -hmm. In, in Uriah. any, pardon me, Uriah. 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 What was I calling? Uriah. Uriah. My name is Joel. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> You see, now I've seen him at conferences and stuff, but I don't know if I've ever, you know, I think I've shaken your hand before. Yes, yeah, but okay, Uriah, right? Okay, all right. What's in the name? <laughs> hmm? Port. There's only one that's in port. That, that, there is only one in port. But like you were saying about the paycheck, <laughs> personally, okay, I don't want many names on my paycheck. <laughs> I, I like my paychecks. Okay, when I get my paycheck, I, I go thank you, Yahweh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, All right. Uh, yeah. This is the day. This it's room. Tearing up this room. <laughs> it's, see, that mystery of iniquity, he just wants to distract us in any way, way, shape, or form. He's going to knock a chart over. <laughs> see, he's going to get uh, the, the dummy on the floor to say you're the wrong name. You see, any distraction that he can get. So, so we got to focus. Okay, we got some distractions going on here. All right, and I've seen it before. Okay, and I've seen just like things collapse okay you know trying to distract us from the truth now we have a framework here and see one 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 principle that the entire world does not get is you see they think Jesus came to institute a Christian way of life now, you can't show me a scripture anywhere, okay? Now, the dean that I came into uh, class, his name was uh, Dennis Volpe, and he would get up on the floor and say that if you can show me where, where, where Jesus came to, said that he came to start anything, he says, I'll eat your book. Mm. See, I don't say that because I think some idiot's going to come along with a book that says that in there, okay? <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, in King James Version, it doesn't say that. In the Holy Name Version, you see, actually, it does. They established. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 A.B. Trana, the, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right. You know? And he said that, that the Messiah came to establish. And he did not. He came to fulfill. Now, do you have the definitions for these? I think I th you, you can look it up. Start, begin. To, to start, begin. Fulfills to end, accomplish. To end. No, no not no. institute. Oh, I'm sorry. Fulfill. We just put right. a couple. Okay. <laughs> to start, to begin, to uh, establish. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. You see, because that that that's uh, what A. B. Trina said. Okay. Now, fulfill means to. If we got start, mm -hmm. it means to stop. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I say if we have start here, mm -hmm. we'd have stop here? Because these words are complete opposites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. See, this one is start. This is the green light. Mm -hmm. This is the red light. All right. Now, <laughs> there were no cops around me. I was late for work. I went through a red light. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have done that. And you know what? They had the little cameras. Oh. $158. Yeah. Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you see, if I would have known the difference between stop and go, I wouldn't have got that ticket. I haven't had a ticket in, I don't know, decades, okay? But it hurt, okay? And, and you know, the thing is, is they had a vision. <laughs> they not only had a picture of my license plate, they even had my Green Bay Packer sticker on there. <laughs> And there was no doubt who that was that went through that red light, okay? <laughs> but you see, the world out here, they don't stop. See? See, Yahshua said he came to stop, okay, to, to end. 
Okay. Complete. Right. So finish. Complete. Finish. To finish. Mm -hmm. Now, my Christian friend, he believes Jesus came to start something. To get us to be nice to one another. Okay. Well, how nice was he, by the way? Didn't he call the priests hypocrites, liars, Whitewash sepulchers. Whitewash sepulchers. You know what a sepulcher is? It's a grave. You see? In other words, they're, they're just... They're, they're the walking dead. Okay? I mean, he did... You know, if you read through the scriptures, and even this fifth chapter of John, once he started his ministry, which, you see, at 30 years old, he started his ministry... Now why? Was that to establish that ministers should start at 30 years of age? No. It was in fulfillment of the priest back here in this tabernacle. Okay? You see? So he was fulfilling. He was fulfilling everything that was written back here in the Law and the Prophets. He came in to fulfill those things, to stop them, to bring them to an end, to complete, to finish. He did not come to start anything. All right? Now, uh, get for me uh, Matthew uh, 5 and 17. Um, and then I'm going to end the scripture reading, John 5, and uh, pick it up about, about verse 30 or so. Matthew 5 and 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Now see, that's what they were accusing him of. And the second he, stand, he, he started his ministry, they sought to kill him. How many times does it say that he you see, slipped away. Or he, see, they, stopped, they, they weren't able to see him. And he, it's the, they'll say he just passed amongst them. You see, and you read, and there, there are times where he left, and when, I mean, left town, got out of Jerusalem, got out of Judah, and went elsewhere because he knew they were going to kill him. Now you say, well, he wasn't successful in the end. They, they stuck him up on the cross. You see, it wasn't time for him to be killed back here in John the 5th chapter. It wasn't according to Yahweh's purpose because he hadn't fulfilled, as it says, all things. Not some things. He came to fulfill all things. All things must be fulfilled which were written in the Law and the Prophets. Okay, now... For those of you who haven't been around that long, see, the Law and the Prophets, that's your Old Testament, if I could put it that way. The Law is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And those were penned by, you see, by Moses. You see, it was given to Moses in a vision that he had up on this mountain. You read this stuff. People don't know this stuff. Okay? <laughs> They, they got Charlton Heston going like this. Well, see, he's blasting Ten Commandments into a rock. Okay, wow, that's a real revelation. No, Moses was called up to this mountain, you see, alone and by himself. And Yahweh transformed, you see, or appeared to him in a visionary shape and form that he that's described in Exodus, the 24th and 25th chapters. That had, it was a body of heaven in his clearness. And that Moses was shown a tabernacle pattern. And Moses was shown, see, when he got up here, he wasn't watching, you see, a commandment blasting into stone. He was given a vision and a revelation, you see. And, and, and he even was given a glimpse, you see, of Yahshua that was to come. Because he said to them, oh, there, that there be such a heart in them. Because he knew that there wasn't at that time. But that there would be. Okay, that's why we got this big heart. Let's see, here's your cross. All right, this is where everything ended. Okay, and I want that in Colossians 2. So what do you got holding for me, please? Matthew? Uh, no, Matthew. 5 and 17. Where do you finish, Matthew? Do you want it again? Pardon me? 
Think not that I am come to destroy yes. the law or the prophets. He's come not to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill. Not establish. Not to institute. He came to end them. Now there's a good reason why he brought that stuff to an end. Because nobody back under this law was able to keep it. Okay, people think it was just the Ten Commandments. There was over 600 ordinances. There was a worldly sanctuary that they had to have. You see, not your church. That wasn't authorized by Yahweh. There was a tabernacle that they built here. And then there was a temple that was authorized by Yahweh to build here. Okay, though, though that and the ark, Noah's ark, are the only three structures that Yahweh authorized for people to use. Okay, now under this law, okay, the one, the, the part that us Christians are familiar with are the Ten Commandments. All right? Now, I'm, I'm not going to ask for any hands or anything like that, but if you were raised in a Christian household, how, how well did you do? Okay? Did you covet? That means to want something. Usually something that somebody else has. Okay? Uh, did, did you bear false witness? Which means to lie. Okay. <laughs> said, well, it was a white lie. It didn't, it didn't say you could pick colors. <laughs> okay? You know, and there are times where we don't actually lie, but we do allow an implication of something different than what, than what is the truth. Okay? Probably everybody in this room has broken all of them, maybe not murder, okay? But pretty much everything else, okay? Now, if you have committed murder, don't tell me about it, I don't want to know, all right? <laughs> but you see, so if he came to establish the Ten Commandments, then wouldn't it make sense that after he came, we'd be able to keep them, you see? Now, he didn't preach the Ten Commandments, okay? He, did, he, did, he was asked about them, but it was under the law. And he was reiterating the things. When he was walking around doing stuff, everything he did and everything he said was in fulfillment of the Scriptures. Okay, now what do you have holding for me? Uh, John. Okay, read John. Uh, pick it up at like 30 or 32. John 5 and 30. I can have... I can of my own self do nothing, as I am taught of my Father. I judge, and my judgment is just, mm -hmm. because I seek not my own will, but, but the, the will of the Father which uh -huh. has sent me. Which has sent me. Go ahead. If I bear witness of myself, ye will say, thy witness is not true. So if he walked up and said, I'm the Messiah, they would say, well, that's just not true. All right, go ahead. Uh, Keep going. There, a, there is another that bear witness of me, uh -huh. and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Uh huh. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. See, John the Baptist, at the time of the baptism of Yahshua the Messiah, he pointed Yahshua out as the Lamb of Yahweh, which come to take away the sin of the world. So he bear witness to Yahshua. But go ahead. But if I receive not testimony from man... But he receives not testimony from man. So just because John, who by the way was filled with the Holy Spirit, points him out as being the Messiah, that doesn't make it true. He receives not witness from man. Go ahead. But these things I say that he might be saved. Mm -hmm. He was a burning and a shining light. See, John was a burning and a shining light. Go ahead. And he were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Mm-hmm. But I have greater witness than that of John. Now he said, I have greater witness than that of John. What is that witness? Go the ahead. The works which the Father had given me to finish, the same works I do. And they bear witness of me. So the works that the Father has given them to institute, right? Finish. To start. Finish. To finish. The works that I do, go ahead. The same works I do. And they bear witness of me that the Father had sent me. So everything he did, you see, everything that Yahshua did was in fulfillment of scriptures. Okay? Now, uh, uh, you have, uh, what do you have holding for me? Okay. 
Nothing? Okay. Would you give me uh, where um, Uriah was? Or Uriah, right? Okay. That's a good name. It's got Yahweh in it. See, w when I came into class, I told my mom what my na name meant. Joel comes, to, no, J in Hebrew. So it, it, and it's not Yoel, it actually is Yael. I said, Mom, my name means Yahweh is Elohim, is what it means. Yahweh is El. Okay? Because El is short for, for Elohim. I was really excited about it. She was really unhappy about it. <laughs> and it was too late to change it. You see, what's in a name, right? I mean, if you go through, by the way, um, uh, like I have a, a, a Nelson Study Bible. And it goes through, at the beginning of all the books of the prophets, it gives their names and what their names meant. See, Malachi was actually Malachi. -ah, okay? Hosea means, by the way, Yahweh is salvation. Okay? Isaiah also means Yahweh is salvation. All right? Um, all those names back there, Hezekiah, see, uh, Ezekiel, all these names mean Yahweh or Elohim. All of them did. You see, for the, uh, there might be one that didn't. But I went through every single name. Okay, you know how you have the little prophets? Okay, at <laughs> the end. Okay, the smaller books. Every one of those guys. You see, Jeremiah. That's easy. Okay, it's short for the name. You see, those names have been around and been in front of us and we, we didn't even know it the whole time. Okay, now, uh, 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 let me go back to the, this fulfillment here. All right. So here Yahshua is, okay, and he said that he came to finish the works which the Father has given him, uh, uh, and, and that's what we just read there in John. Okay, is there anything more there in John? No. No? Okay. So, okay, so yeah. Matthew 3 and 13. Yeah, go over to Matthew. Thank you. Matthew 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Joshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Okay. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? You see, I mean, John, by the way, had the Holy Spirit. All right. And when, when um, um, see, uh, uh, Elizabeth was, uh, was um, Mary's cousin, or they were, you know, when, when you look that up, it just means that they were somehow related, okay? I was looking at that the other day. And so, uh, John was born first, okay? And when, when John was killed, okay, or when John was born, I'm sorry, he was born in the winter, okay? He was born in December. All right, and John was about six months older than Yahshua. So when Yahshua was born, he had to be born in the spring. Okay, and you can work it out that he was born June sixth. See, you don't even have, you don't have his name right. You don't even know when his birthday is. Okay, let's say you're married to someone. Let's say you have an intimate relationship with them. Okay, do you have a hard time remembering your wife's birthday? Mm -mm. And you shouldn't, and, and you probably don't just have to remember it. Okay, <laughs> you have to provide something to show how happy you are that it's their birthday. Okay, because it's it's their day, right? It's when they came in. See, so here's John. And you see, when Mary came to uh, uh, her cousin Elizabeth, and, and, and uh, Mary was, was pregnant with Yahshua, and John, you see, uh, uh, or Elizabeth was, was, was uh, uh, bearing John, that the baby leapt in the womb. Showing that, you see, the spirit was bearing witness to spirit. All right? So they had a connection. So here we are, 30 years later. Again, 30 years in fulfillment of the scriptures, because the high priest back here had to be 30 years of age, okay, when he went to his ministry. So here, Yahshua, he comes to John, to Jordan, to be baptized of him. All right? Now, uh, read, th read that again. Matthew 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Mm -hmm. But John forbade him, saying, 
I have need to be baptized of thee. Now John, thou to me. Now John had the Holy Spirit, and he knew who Yahshua was. Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll we'll pick that up uh, uh, also. Um, but you see, he says, "You're you you should be baptizing me." Now baptism back here. You see, was see, see someone would uh, uh, they'd ask if, if they were a sinner, and then the person would say yes, and then pladouche. Okay, they would baptize them. Okay, that this was a baptism of repentance. So here comes Yahshua. Had he ever sinned? No. Had he ever done anything wrong? No. No, that was Yahweh himself incarnated in the physical body, folks. That's who that was. You see, so when he comes to John, and John realizes, you see, that that's the Holy Spirit standing right in front of him, he said, look, I have need to be baptized of you. Why are you coming to me? Okay, go ahead. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Uh -huh. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. You see, when Yahshua, who the world calls Jesus, came to John the Baptist to be baptized, the world thinks he came to start water baptism. Now, uh, go over uh, in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and pick it up to the first verse where, where Bernie was. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. My over brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, he's referring to, you see, this is Paul talking here. Paul is referring to, you see, now this baptism occurred um, 1,490 something years after this baptism back here. All right? This was the baptism where the entire nation of Israel were baptized in the cloud, which was Yahweh, and in the sea. So there was a baptism back here. So, so. so kind of business that I'm in, okay? I'm in, I'm in scientific research. All right. We had some really good data lately, all right? And we were kind of excited about it that we thought we can take this and we can come up with an intervention is what the, the term that's used, or in other words, a treatment for a cancer, all right? And so we're writing all this stuff up. We're trying to get grant money. And guess what? Someone published it. They beat us, mm -hmm. okay? So they instituted it. Once it's been instituted, it can't be instituted. You can't start it again. Yeah. You go out, you start your car, and you go, I don't know if it's started enough. Maybe I should start it some more. What's it going to do? It's going to cuss you out. It's going to go... It's going to make just an awful noise. All right. All right? Because it's already been started. Okay? Now, we got an angle, by the way, in, in, <laughs> that we're going in, you see. But that, that's, that's how things are. All right? Now, this person beat us by a couple weeks. Okay? Before we were able to publish our data. All right? And it's sad, but that's just the way it goes. Okay? This baptism wasn't... wasn't beaten by a couple weeks. Mm. This baptism was be beaten by thousands of years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you're a thousand, if, you, if, you're, if, if, if you're five minutes late, that's not bad. Okay? If you're a thousand years, let's say 1,490 years to be exact, mm -hmm. late, okay, you can't make claims that you're starting water baptism. Matter of fact, back under this law of Moses, okay, back here, okay, they had lots of cleansings and lots of, of water. And people are baptized, being baptized all over the world right now. Not realizing that baptism came to an end back at the time of the Messiah. That he said he came 
to fulfill it. You see, Moses baptized, you see, Aaron and his sons in this tabernacle before they could minister in here. Okay? And not only that, the high priest had to be washed in this labor. Alright? And the sacrifice, which is which Yahshua is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He is that lamb. Okay? This lamb back here was baptized in this labor before it was offered up. So that's why Yahshua, at the beginning of his ministry, in fulfillment of everything that's written back there in the Law and the Prophets, he comes in and he's water baptized. And he's doing it in his words to fulfill, to finish. Now once baptism was fulfilled, okay, once he got baptized, once the Creator came in, you see, Yahweh set it up. He instituted it back here with the children of Israel. But you know, you go back even further. You see, there was a baptism here with Noah and the ark. The whole world was baptized. All right? Now, how well did the people that got wet do? Not well. Not very well. Okay? See, back here, the earth was inundated in water. All right? Now, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to get into this water baptism is because there are things that are happening in the world right now. Okay? Romans 1, 19 and 20. Read, read that for me, please. Romans 1, 19. Because mm -hmm. that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Now see, this is a mouthful. Basically what it's saying is you can understand Yahweh, who is spiritual. You see, Yahweh is described in the scriptures, you see, as being, not having, but actually being wisdom, intelligence. He is knowledge. He doesn't have knowledge. He's, in, he's knowledge itself. See, you see the bumper stickers on the cars, God is love. Where'd they get that from? They got it from the scriptures. That doesn't make sense. You see, you think it should say, God has love. Okay? No, He is love itself. He is justice. He is beauty, foundation, power, and strength. These are invisible attributes that Yahweh is made up of. These are the things that He is. Okay? Now, uh, so when it says here, the invisible things of Him, this is what we're talking about. All right, Jennifer? Yeah. Jennifer is a very good artist. Okay, in addition to a lovely singing voice, she's she's a good artist. You know, see, she she's wonderful to get involved in, in painting charts and stuff like that. All right, Jennifer, get up here and draw me a picture of wisdom, would you please? Sorry, can't do it. Can't do it? No. Okay. How about intelligence? Not possible. Okay, it's not possible. She might get up, get up here and go, well, E equals MC squared, okay? Okay, all right? See, that's Einstein's equation for relativity. Okay, you can write this up here. Now look at, now, I'm not bragging on myself, but I have a lot of schooling. I cannot explain this to you, okay? This is, see, see, there are very few people on the planet that actually can understand what this equation means. Okay? Now we can generalize it and say that, see, this, this means that all matter is energy materialized. But explain to me how this tells you that. <laughs> you know, there are people that spend their lives trying to figure this stuff out. Now this isn't, but this isn't intelligent. This is an example of intelligence. This is not intelligence itself. There's a big difference. You see, that's what Yahweh is. And that's, you see, he, he is those things. He doesn't have them. This is what He, in fact, is. Okay? So, 
So when it says here that the invisible things of him, his wisdom, his intelligence, his knowledge, his love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength, that those are the invisible things of Yahweh. Now since we can't perceive of him in this form, he has to break himself down. He has to make a creation. And then he actually comes down and he walks, gets into a body See, this wasn't God's little boy. You see, this was him in a sonship degree. Or in other words, it, see, Yahweh, the whole universe abides within Yahweh. And, and, and you can read that throughout your, your Bible. Okay, it's in Acts, it's in Jeremiah, it's in, in, in the book of Kings, it's in the Psalms, that we live, move, and have our being right within Yahweh. Okay, now, see, this is, this is what he is. But we can't understand that. So he came down in a lesser state okay and walked around among us all right knowing and like I, I mean, you read the the so-called new testament he was constantly disappearing on them or leaving town just just up and well time time to go because he knew they would kill him before his time they wanted him dead okay See, but this, it wasn't time yet. Now, now look at He knew he was going to die. Now, let's take it from a Christian standpoint. If you got God way up in the sun, moon, and stars, and he sends his little boy down here, knowing that he would go through this brutal death, does that make any sense to you? You parents, okay? You wouldn't send, well... I'm going to send my son Jacob to go do this. He has a 10% chance of survival. Okay. <laughs> would you do that? No. Okay. You would go, if, you're, if you are a good parent, you would give your life for your child. Okay. In most cases. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't want to guilt anybody. All right. But you see, this wasn't his little boy. You see, we have a saying in this world that if you want a job done right, do it yourself. That's what Yahweh did. He came right down and he got into this physical body. And he knew that he had to spend three and a half years fulfilling all the stuff that was back here, you see, that was given to Moses and that was in the Law and the Prophets. Now, he did that for a couple reasons. One, so that when he came around and he fulfilled water baptism, he filled, fulfilled circumcision, he fulfilled, you see, the Lord's Suppers. These, you see, people say, oh, well, Jesus told us to, to do the Lord's Supper. You don't know what he was talking about. This was called the Passover Supper for, for, for you, uh, you know, for, for, for us Christians. Okay, we didn't know that. I didn't know that. See, I got crackers and grape juice. All right. No, 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 no. This was, they had lamb on the menu, right? I, th this was a feast. And it wasn't done every Sunday. I, in, in the Catholic Church, you can go and get communion every day. Okay? And, and, and the, the, like, really rabid uh, 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 Catholics will do that. All right? So, see, but that wasn't how it was set up. This Lord's Supper is back here. When he was doing this Lord's Supper, he was fulfilling something that was set up back here in the land of Egypt, okay, at 14,900 years see, or so before the Messiah, there was a Passover set up, okay? And you see, uh, uh, Bernie was talking about this, how that there was a lamb taken, and the, and the blood of the lamb was put on the door. There was four points of, of blood. The lamb was pierced in the side, okay? You see, uh, the, 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 you, you read the 12th chapter of Exodus, and you see, Yahshua, when he comes along, what does John say? Behold the lamb. Why didn't he call him a cat? See, lambs, eh, I like cats. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cat person, okay? Or, or, or how about 
the tiger. Mm. Okay, behold the tiger of Yahweh. And you go, ooh, that's, that, that's hot stuff, <laughs> you see. Okay, no, behold the lamb of Yahweh. Why? Because he's fulfilling the lamb down there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. right. This lamb, they took the blood and they put it on the door. Four points of blood. Yahshua is walking around and, and he's, he, he is called the door. Okay? He's called the Lamb. See, he's that door and there's four points of blood. One, two, three, four points of blood around this door. This Lamb was pierced in the side. Isn't he pierced in the side? This was a Passover here. See, he wasn't alone. There was a, a, a thief on one side and a robber on the other side. And that, that centurion had to get him down by the Sabbath day. All right? So he, he, he breaks the leg of the thief on the one side. And then see, with crucifixion, you've got to hold yourself up to breathe. You break someone's legs and you suffocate. You have no way to, to, to breathe anymore. So he breaks the legs of the thief on the one side. And what does he do? He breaks Joshua's legs, right? Okay. No. Why not? Because no bones of the, of the lamb down here in Egypt could be broken. All right? So here he comes. Okay? And so instead, he passes over. Now, wasn't there a death angel? That, that death angel, you see, would pass over the doors that had the blood. All right? And that, was, that, that had, had that four points of blood. So this centurion, likened to that death angel, has the power of life or death. He passes over Yahshua, breaks the thief on the other side. And then when he comes to Yahshua, he says, oh, he's already dead. So if he's already dead, why did he pierce him in the side? You see, it was in fulfillment of the scriptures back here. See, he's fulfilling all these things. Now, this should go to you. This, this, this whole stuff should go to your, your heart and your soul and think, wow, there's a whole lot more to what he was doing than just walking around, you see, and, 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 and saying, blessed are the peacemakers. Okay? Even that whole thing was in fulfillment of the scriptures. You see? See, Chuck has worked with that. All right? So here he is, and he comes to John, and he says, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he was baptized. Now, how much time do I got? Okay. Now, Romans 1, 19 and 20, the physical reveals the spiritual. Okay. There were some events this week that were remarkable in the news. New York City has never, ever had a flash flood advisory. And a matter of fact, I think it was 40 people were killed. 40. Okay, because there's a pattern. Blood, water, spirit, 40. All right. People were drowned in their basements. The subway system was inundated in water. They had to pump it out. Now that was at the end of Hurricane Ida. She cut a swath of death and destruction all the way from Louisiana up into the Midwest and all the way up to the East Coast. Has this ever happened before? No. 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 Now there's a reason for it. Now people are all upset about COVID. COVID is... is it's a, it's a girly <laughs> plague, if I can put it that way. This earth right now is heating up. And it's accelerating at such a rate that, see, the reason why there was floods, you see, and people didn't just die in New York. They died in Tennessee. They died all the way from Louisiana to New York. Okay? They don't even know how many people died because these floods would come in and basically take out the town. And this has happened multiple times throughout the United States. All right? Now, why is this happening? From a biological, not biological, from, from a physics standpoint, the reason why this is happening is, number one, the earth is heating up. 
And what it's doing is, it is now this was in the New York Times this week, it is producing clouds that are different than anything we've had before. These clouds are different because of the heat, they are able to have far more water in them than normal storms that we experience. Okay? And that these clouds are so full of water that when the cloud burst happens, you see, it just devastates anything under it with water. See, I mean, we live in Florida, we, we, we get some rain. Not like what we're seeing now. And, and here's the thing. The President of the United States said after all this happened, he said, we got to do something about this and we got to do something now. And their stimulus bill and all this stuff, they're trying to reverse this stuff. Now what are the scientists saying? Do you guys know what the scientists are saying? It's too late! That's right. It cannot be reversed. You think everybody out here is going to stop driving their car? They want to start having cars be fully electric by 19 or 19, <laughs> by 2035. So, so for the next 10 or so years, we're going to be pumping more and more greenhouse gases. The storms are going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, um, Give me uh, the scripture we're declaring the end from the beginning. If you would, please. Now you go back and you'll find how this world started out. It started out inundated in water. That's how, it's, that's how Moses described it back there in Genesis. Actually, someone, if you could, uh, I got two minutes left. Go to Genesis, the first chapter, and read it. You'll find that it's in there, that this, this earth came in buried in water. And then that age, you see, you see that, we don't have the chart, you see, but that, uh, uh, um, that antediluvian age, you see, ended with a flood. Okay, now the age with Yahshua the Messiah, you see, on the day of Pentecost, you see, after his death, burial, and resurrection, there was an outpouring of that Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And an outpouring of knowledge that just Blood. flooded the world. You see? So if that if the end is declared from the beginning, do you have that shared, yes. please? Isaiah 46 and 9. Thank you. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh and there is none else. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh and there is none like me. Right. Declaring the end from the beginning. Now he declared the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Alright? So you gotta have now now look at am I saying the world's gonna perish in water? No. Not physical no. water. No. This is a, a type. This is a shadow. This is an example telling you that Yahweh's bringing this creation to a close. And it's all over in your scriptures. And just as there was a flood here, and there was a flood here, and there was a flood here, this age is going to end in the flood too. But it's not going to be water this time, as the song says. Okay? It's, and, and, and you, but you've got to have a witness in the creation. And that's what's going on. And the oceans, folks, are coming closer. And, 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 and the, these storms, you see, that are hitting now, and the, the, these, these hurricanes and such, they are taking out the whole coastline. You see? And that the water is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. The oceans are getting deeper because the, 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 the warm thing is, is, is melting those ice caps. You see, you guys have heard all this stuff. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just telling you why it's happening. You see? And that Yahweh is causing this to happen. And here's the thing. Last thing I'll say. Take it to heart. Come to class. Open a book when you get at home. Not, not, I mean, not the second you get home, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You see, 
If you don't feel ready, pray to Yahshua and diligently seek Him. If you diligently seek Him, He will reward you. You see, this is, see, this is what I'm all about. See, this teaching, you see, and that this teaching, you see, in the preaching of this gospel, that's the water that is going to take out this creation. And you don't have that much time. Now, I know that's heavy. <laughs> see? But this is where you are. You see, when I was opening John and reading through John the 5th chapter this morning, I was happy. You know why I was happy? Because I understood it. I understood everything he was saying in there. You see? Now, how many people out here in the world can, can say that? We are blessed among all people. So, thank you for the time. I'm sorry I went a couple minutes over. Uh, I'll turn it over to the moderator. We want to thank everybody for coming out and studying with us, and especially to our visitors. Everyone just keep coming back. We hold classes here every... Sunday from 11 to 1 and then we still have our Wednesday Zoom classes. If you want that information and you want to join us live on Zoom we would love to have you. The more the merrier. Um, it's great to have you guys come on live with us. So just ask me and I can email you the information. Um, Alright, so let's please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim our Savior through Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign belong glory and majesty, dominion and power both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah.